Shalom! Bibruchim Habaim Leod Perek Shel The Hat Historian. In this video, I will be talking about a piece of headwear commonly worn by followers of the Jewish faith the kippah. The kippah, sometimes also known by the Yiddish name of yarmulke, is a small skullcap commonly worn during prayer and ceremonies by the Jewish faithful, though some more devout wear it at all times. Traditionally worn only by men, some branches have extended its use to women as well. Now I should note before anything else that I am not Jewish myself, I am in fact Catholic. But for ceremonies such as weddings, bar or bat mitzvahs, funerals, or any other Jewish ceremony they attend, Gentiles, well, not obligated, are encouraged to wear one as a sign of respect, and they will often be provided with one. The practice for observant Jews to wear a head covering is steeped in tradition, going back to at least Talmudic times, from roughly 70 BC to AD 500. The reasoning is, in order to show respect and acknowledgement of the divine being above one's head, with the Talmud saying, cover your head in order that the awe of heaven may be upon you. In the early days, only rabbis or Kohens, people of great importance, would cover their heads, with this specific idea in mind. This practice dates back to the high priests of the Temple of Jerusalem, whose garb included head coverings. It was said that one should not walk more than four cubits, or about two meters, without covering one's head. There is also a story related that in the days of Babylon, a woman was warned that her son might become a thief, and so encouraged him to always cover his head to remind him of God's presence. Once, under another man's fruit tree, this covering fell off, and seeing the fruit, he was tempted to take it essentially stealing from this other man. Remembering his mother's words, he realized the importance of the covering and regained his honesty and became a rabbi. These stories lead to wearing a headdress being a mark of devotion amongst the faithful, and while the Torah does not mandate it, covering one's head was thus engraved as a midat chahisut, or pious act, and in theory any form of head covering would do. Interestingly, Muslims have a very similar practice with the takia, a knit skullcap traditionally worn during prayer as well. These bases for wearing a head covering are at the root of the practice of wearing a kippah. However, the modern skullcap took a long time to become standard. As it was originally just an act of piety and not a commandment, outside of the clergy, many men would not wear any particular hat other than their daily one, simply retaining it while praying. The concept of a hat that is specific to the Jewish people emerged in medieval Europe with the Jewish hat, sometimes called back then the Pileus Cornutus, or horned cap. Originally a sort of soft Phrygian cap-like hat, it evolved into a stiffer version with a round brim and a ball at its summit, sometimes atop a small stock. Originating in 11th century Flanders, it was at first worn by Jews as a way to distinguish themselves from their Gentile neighbors, as otherwise their form of dress was mainly indistinguishable. It was initially adopted fairly voluntarily, and mostly considered, after a few years, a traditional element of dress. It was even included in coats of arms or Hebrew texts. However, after a couple of centuries, the style declined removing this distinguishing mark, which concerned the anti-Semitic authorities who wanted to be able to recognize the Jewish population, as they were discriminated against by law in many places. Therefore, the hat was made compulsory, especially in the Germanic states, and it gained certain negative connotations, sometimes also being used to depict non-Jewish outcasts, as they were often conflated at the time. These laws were eventually relaxed in the 16th century, by which point the hat rapidly disappeared, being replaced with less distinctive styles, such as caps or berets, or whatever style was prevalent at the time. It is also at this time that the concept of covering one's head at all times began to be ingrained in some groups, not as a simple act of piety, but a true obligation. Amongst the various forms of headgear worn, a new trend began to emerge in Europe, that of wearing a small skull cap on one's head. This could easily be worn underneath another hat without being seen, but also allowed the head to remain covered if the bigger hat had to be removed, such as when indoors, as conventions both then and now required. Throughout the following couple of centuries, the kippah began to become established as the most common distinctive piece of headwear to be worn by observant Jews, and a new symbol of their identity. Kippot then spread further around the world in the 19th and 20th centuries, with the emigration of the Jewish diaspora from Europe to places such as America, bringing their customs and traditions with them. Kippot became sometimes more elaborate, decorated with embroidery or bright colors, as an expression of identity. It should be noted that other Jewish communities in the Middle East and Africa wore local forms of headwear such as plots or fezes, though in the Ottoman Empire, discriminatory laws forbade the wearing of some items by Jews and Christians, such as turbans. Then, in the 20th century, after the horrors of the Holocaust, and with the foundation of the State of Israel, 
A massive wave of Jewish migration to the new country and a renewed sense of identity brought the practice of wearing the kippah to the Levant and to a new height, with many people of this new state wearing one not only for prayer, but in day-to-day -day life. There is disagreement between different branches of Judaism as to when kippah should be worn. As I said before, there is no specific commandment in the Torah to do so, and originally it was not a requirement at all, with it being worn only as an additional measure of devotion when praying, or by those of high positions of authority. Halachic, or Jewish legal, authorities often debate on when the wearing of kippot is appropriate or required. The vast majority of practicing Jews only wear them during times of devotion, such as when praying, in or out of synagogue, at ceremony, or in a sacred space. Though some might choose to wear one more often as a sense of pride in their community. Orthodox Jewish groups, however, recommend the wearing of a kippah at all times, with the reason that it is supposed to be worn when honoring God, and a pious man should always be honoring him. On the other end, Reform Judaism has historically eschewed the wearing of kippot altogether, though in recent years some communities have taken to wearing them when in synagogue. Of course, secular Jews will usually only wear one when at events where it is expected, such as, for example, a relative or friend's bar mitzvah, in the same way a Gentile might, but not otherwise. Traditionally, the kippah has been a male headdress, but in more recent times, in certain non-Orthodox communities, women have started wearing them as well. Some even wear one outside of prayer times as a mark of their identity. While this is still frowned upon by certain conservatives, the practice of women wearing kippot, which are sometimes slightly different to make them more feminine, is increasingly common and accepted. Kippot, while the most common and recognized piece of Jewish headwear, is not the only one worn by the devout. Most notably in Hasidic communities, but also others that are more traditional, several other hats are worn, often on top of a kippah. Some consider this to be a mark of additional piety. Today, many conservative or orthodox Jews, particularly descended from Central and Eastern European communities, wear black fedoras or homburgs, which were adopted in the early to mid 20th century, at the time when they were simply the fashionable hat of the day. After they faded from mainstream fashion, the Orthodox retained them as they were considered formal, modest, and conservative, attributes that are desired in clothing. Homburgs are rarer now, but they can still be found worn by some rabbis as a more formal alternative to the fedora. Other traditional hats are mainly descended from Central and Eastern European clothing, which Ashkenazi communities encountered while living there, and which were retained for formal events by traditionalists. The first of these, the kashket, a cap based on model worn by Russian peasants, and that was from the later half of the 19th century until World War II, the dress headwear of many Russian Jews and their descendants elsewhere. While it is rarely worn daily now, it can still be seen on Shabbat or other celebrations, on people living in, or with ancestors from, Slavic country. In popular culture, it is often seen worn by the character Tievya in the show Fiddler on the Roof. A somewhat more striking hat is the streimel, a cylindrical fur hat worn by Hasidic men on holy days. Originally more of a fur-lined cap, it is likely descended from various Tatar or Russian headdresses, though no certain origin is attested, and was worn by the Jewish populations of places such as Romania, Hungary, Ukraine, or Lithuania, notably the Litva. A formal and expensive hat, it is worn usually by the descendants of such populations in places such as New York or Israel for Shabbat, and is also associated in Jerusalem with a perushim, some of the original Ashkenazi immigrants to the region before Israel was created. Similar to the Shtraimel are the Kolpik and the Spodik. They are mostly identical large fur hats, the main difference being that the Kolpik is traditionally made of brown fur, whereas the Spodik is black. Kolpiks are generally worn by Rebs descended from Ukrainian Jewish communities, and Spodiks tend to be worn by those from Polish Jewish communities. Both such hats are worn for the Shabbat and grand occasions, and are said to have been adapted from the hats worn by Polish-Lithuanian nobility. All these hats, while in the past might have been worn more often, are expensive, hot, especially in Israel, a Middle Eastern country, and so are now generally reserved for formal events, and are worn on top of, and in addition to, not instead of, a kippah. Anyone who has interacted with observant Jewish communities will know that the kippah is widely worn today, perhaps more so in some places such as Israel than it was in the past. There are many different kinds of kippot available, and in some cases they can be used to indicate a wearer's affiliation, religiously or politically. Generally, simple suede ones are the most neutral, being worn by conservative, orthodox, and reform alike, whereas small knitted or crocheted ones tend to be favored amongst those who identify with right-wing Zionist politics. Satin ones are usually given out to those who need them during celebrations, and are worn by secular Jews or non-Jews who do not own one themselves. In Israel, many men wear the kippah daily, and as opposed to some other countries with Jewish population, wearing one does not necessarily indicate strong piety, though not wearing one tends to mark one as largely secular, for example, someone who drives and uses electricity on Shabbat. 
In modern times, there have been kipot expressing personal style and other affiliation, such as using the colors of professional sports teams, or, especially in children, featuring cartoon or movie characters. This has led to some debate in religiously conservative circles as to what is appropriate. There have been some legal issues surrounding the wearing of kippot, based on principles of secularism and the separation of church and state. Notably, religious symbols including the kippah are forbidden in France in public schools, and in Canada, the Quebec government forbids it and other religious symbols from being worn by government employees while on duty. There are also unfortunately instances of people being insulted, or worse, singled out because of their wearing of kippot. A distinctive mark of Jewish identity and practice of devotion, the kippah, though simple in form, is steeped in meaning and tradition. While there are many debates over why and how often it must be worn, it is a widely recognized symbol of Judaism, worn by millions of practitioners throughout the world as a symbol of faith in their beliefs, pride in who they are, and respect and devotion to their God. So I hope once again you found this video interesting and will join me again soon for another hat. Until then, I tip my hat to you.